Good morning, everybody. It's Mark. It's July 2nd, uh, Monday. New week, the week of July 4th, so it's going to be an abbreviated week. We have off, we have a day Tuesday, off on Wednesday, so we'll have to see how this market treats us. Obviously, you got some, <clears throat> uh, you know, nice, nice upticks going from Thursday into Friday with a big, you know, big gap up, and then we just kept going with a 2% up move. You know, it happened fast, it happened furious, end of quarter. You know, they're just, they're just showing their books institutions, managers, and that's where we're at. Has anything changed? Uh, too soon to tell, but I like the fact that, you know, it seems like some of the stuff overseas is winding down, at least temporarily, <coughs> until the next country has some problems. But technically, we're still seeing, you know, it took three to four weeks of grinded downward action, and one or two days, we're right back to where, you know, we were just grinding from. To me, that's a little bit more bullish. Obviously, you know, I've been on the bullish camp and just sort of staying away on the sidelines when I see some trouble, which we've had had for the last few weeks. Lots of indecision, lots of lack of volume. I don't know if that's going to change, but we do have earnings coming up. So I do like to get set myself up for positions, ideally going into earnings and then probably take them off maybe before earnings. You know, a few ideas I'm looking at. I'm looking at Apple today. Uh, really, the trigger, you know, you, you can, I've been long a tier one, you know, with options or whatever. Ideally, it seems like the easier play to really at 590, a trigger for a move to 600, possibly 615, 620. That might happen after earnings. We'll have to wait and see. But it seems like it wants to go grind higher. Best in breed, in my opinion, at this point in time, you have Amazon. Uh, you know, a few points away from its, you know, all-time high. Netflix, to me, is actually looking okay. Some some, some uh, defensive stocks, Clorox, I just saw, had a big three-day move and at all-time, not all-time high, yearly highs. Walmart's another one that's, again, just cannot, every time it's a pullback happens, it seems like it's viable. Of the banks, the banks, you know, obviously had a two-day rally. One, one idea that I've been talking about pretty consistently is GE. And GE popped its head up yesterday or Friday. I was not here, so I did miss my trigger for the long. The long would be new highs. And at this point, wait for a little bit of a pullback to really get back involved. I think GE is going to be, you know, should be consistently a bigger winner as uh, <laughs> the year goes on. Um, but today, you know, we're back to overbought, overbought which means you got to wait. Uh, two big day, uh, a two day, you know, big travel range. You got to wait. Uh, charts are starting to look okay, but it doesn't mean we can't get some downward action after that drastic move we had on Friday. Uh, but at the same time, I'm still looking on the bullish, you know, the long side on a lot of these pullbacks. LinkedIn, MLNX, SXCI, some of the same stuff I've been talking about. The entries and you know how to play them from the cash flow point of view has not been easy the last few weeks, but as we get a trending market, ideally to the upside, we'll start to see you know uh, you'll get follow through days you know two, three, four, five day follow through days. That's where you got to take advantage of this tape. Right now we're not there yet. This Friday maybe gave us a little piece of what we're in 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 for. Understanding we are overbought. I know one and a half days up you know, but it, we had a big up move or a little bit overbought. So you got to wait and see. But these are the stocks I mentioned, and uh, we'll have to see if uh, we'll have to see what happens intraday to see if I'm really going to execute on them. Good luck, guys.